Moderator for the panel. Good morning. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here with all of you and with our great panel of experts. Um, you know, we had heard in the last panel a lot of uh, discussion about economic development, innovation in terms of academic research and a vision for how that could happen. And this panel is really going to take that and try to apply that to the public policy realm, to the real estate market and um, the built environment. How do you translate that into that, that very everyday life and, and the kind of on the ground context? Um, you know, with regard to just military base, it's almost synonymous that when you're talking about military base reuse, you're talking about job creation. This is true in Alameda. It's a common thread. It's obviously a, a conversation here at Fort Ord. Um, uh, all of you know Fort Ord lost almost 18,000 jobs. Alameda did too. It has a big impact on the economy and the, the local economies and region. And so you, you ha you, it's just a discussion that we have every day. But the, the trick too with regard to land development and real estate too is that it's also probably the least predictable real estate market, the commercial market. You know, housing, although we've obviously come out of a great recession, the housing market is more predictable. It's, it's relatively easy. Um, there is an element, especially on the central coast, of you, will, you build it and they will come. The commercial, develop, the commercial market is not like that at all. I mean, with the exception of probably a, a couple of sub-markets in San Francisco, downtown San Francisco, South San Francisco, there just isn't the kind of market for speculative commercial development. So it makes it very difficult to fulfill that piece of the vision that, that our communities um, in Alameda and, and here in the Monterey Bay region have for, for the reuse of a, of a major um, facility like this. And so I just wanted to um, talk very briefly before I let our panel introduce themselves and present some of these topics is talk a little bit about Alameda and some of the things we're doing and, and we by no means have figured this out and are 100% successful at implementing this but we are trying to do some things to capture jobs, fulfill that really important key piece of the vision that we in Alameda and I know here ha you have as well. So some of the things that we're doing, there's three things I want to mention. The first is um, we do have a number of buildings, existing buildings, that we have that large industrial buildings, residential buildings, and to the extent possible, and it's certainly not possible for all of them, there's all kinds of issues, environmental, lead, and asbestos in a number of them, but we do currently lease about 1.8 million square feet of commercial and industrial buildings. And we, for a long time, our approach was, this is our interim leasing program. We're going to lease these buildings, use the money to try to um, maintain the base, um, but you know what? That's really not our focus because our focus is new commercial development, new residential development. And we've really in the last couple of years started to sh culturally kind of shift the way that we're thinking about those existing tenants, those existing buildings, not only in terms of the revenue and using that to help fund some of our entitlement efforts, our planning efforts, but also as these are, this is our economic development base. We have tenants on our base. We have jobs. Now, do we have the same number of jobs that we envisioned in our original plans? Of course not. We're not even close to those numbers, just like Fort Ord isn't. Um, but we're starting to think of them differently. These, these are the, the folks that we want to retain. We want to try to grow some of these. And so we've taken kind of a very different, effort, different approach to how we treat those existing tenants and starting to really grow some of those um, those existing businesses that we have on our base. And we have had some success at having some green tech kind of startups actually get purchased by larger companies and starting to expand into other buildings and starting to think, they're starting to think long term, think about how they might actually grow onto um, land and build new facilities. And so we're starting to see that life cycle of some of these smaller businesses actually grow on site. Um, we've also seen some companies that are interested in some of our better buildings that we have um, more long term um, because they're obviously already built. There's our, the building's already there. They're not having to pay for the construction of those buildings and, and we're able to actually underwrite some of the value of those buildings um, so when they purchase them, if, if they do, use that money to, to pay for the infrastructure that they so desperately need. So that's one of the things we're doing. The second thing is that we are funding through those lease revenues major entitlements, and I know you guys have gone through major entitlement process, we've gone through several ourselves, but we are trying to get some 
ver the very important basic entitlements and planning documents in place so that we're creating certainty. This is one of the things from a commercial standpoint so that a potential business comes in, they can see the finish line before they even start the process, that they know they're not going to have to go to 10 public hearings. And um, you know, We have created the, the environmental documents, the zoning, the master infrastructure plan, all the things that they're going to need, and we've created a package and, and presented to them a very clear path to how they're going to get to building their building and doing the thing that they want to do, which is run their business. And so we're really trying to take out a lot of that uncertainty in the planning process and the entitlement process out of the equation so that we can really facilitate those businesses. The last thing um, we're doing is really trying to market to a particular sector to a particular part of the commercial market, which is this build the suit, or trying to actually create, find some of our land, some of our actual best land, not just the dregs of the development that no residential developer wants, but trying to find some parcels on our site that we can kind of, we can zone commercial or industrial that we can show that are available for a build to suit user. Um, so we know we're not going to capture necessarily, at least in no time soon, um, speculative commercial development, but maybe there is a major user, and we're not looking for the Google or the Apple, but someone smaller, possibly a business that wants a new campus, in our case on the waterfront, um, you have a lot of the same kind of locational advantages that we can show them. Here's 10 acres, here's 15 acres of land that's available, that's zoned, that's all ready to go, you know, and then start to market a particular piece of property, some of our best property, to some of those users in the, in the, the Bay Area. So these are some of the things that we're, we're looking at, we're doing. I'm looking forward to hearing from all the panels so that we c I can take home notes and, and we can start doing things better in Alameda as well. Um, but I wanted to share some of our experience with you as well. So now I'm going to turn it over to Peter Katz to come up and talk a little bit more about the built environment piece.